Welcome everyone. Thank you for attending our very first educational webinar. Um, today's topic, we're gonna be doing a demo of the manager dashboard and the investor portal and all of its new features. Um, let me take a moment to introduce everybody that's on this presentation today. So I'm Nicole Fortine. I'm a customer success manager here at Veravest. Erin Warner is also on this um, webinar. She is also a customer success web, um, a customer success manager at Veravest. And we also have Kaylee Schaefer. She is an investor support specialist. So let's um, just take a moment to review the agenda. So I'm going to be um, doing all the review of the manager dashboard. So I'm going to start with an overview of the manager dashboard, and then I'm going to go into some of the specific features that um, might be of interest. I'm also going to show you how to pull an accounts and contacts export. Those are both new features. And then I'm going to show you to, where to find some support resources within the manager dashboard. Erin is going to go into an overview of the investor portal and its new features. She's also going to show you what the manager um, profile and opportunity pages look like from the investor point of view. And then she's going to do a quick review of the investment flow for investors. And last, we're going to end with Q&A. So we encourage you to drop questions into the Q&A box throughout the entire webinar. We really are excited to answer your questions, so don't be shy. Feel free to ask as many questions as you would like. All right, so let's begin. I'm going to share my screen and we can dive right in. Just give me one moment. All right, so when you log into the manager dashboard, you're going to land on this home page. And you'll notice that you'll see your profile views, opportunity views, and new contacts that have been created. This all is reflective of the last 90 days. And then you will also be able to access um, information on Fund Builder, our new um, offering here. And you can also see um, our Help Center. You can access it directly from this page. So you can click on this and it will take you to our support library or you can contact support directly from this page. And then you'll see you have navigation over here. You can see all the tabs that you have access to. So at the top, you have your profile page. This is your publicly facing profile page that investors can access and learn more about your company. You have the contacts tab, and this is where you can view both prospective investors and your actual investor base here. Accounts is where you would manage your investors that have a completed investment with you and all of their historical account information. And the investments tab is where you would be able to view both in progress and completed investments. Opportunities is where you could manage um, your actual open opportunities and fully funded opportunities that are hosted on our platform. Offerings is more geared toward our accounting and admin tools but it is another uh, place where you can access some of the um, in, like investor information related to your offerings, like your, all of the investors that are invested in an offering and some of their distribution sets, statements, things like that. Reports are where you can create and download reports that just um, are generated from all of the information that is stored in your manager dashboard. And so there's several different types of reports that you can pull, such as a car report. Um, you can pull a um, capital pledge and contributed report. There's, there's lots of different reports that you can save and pull whenever you need them to. Settings is where you can um, access your manager profile link or upload a new logo for your statements or grant DocuSign access. That's kind of really all that settings is for. But now that we've kind of did an overview of all of these tabs, let's kind of dive into some of the more features and functionality of each. So let's start with profile. So on the profile page, you pretty much have access to edit this entire page directly from this profile tab. So you, this is what all the information that's housed. And let's start at the top. You can click on your logo, and this is where you can change out your logo if you have a different logo that you prefer to use, and then you can just click save. 
you can click edit next to your company name and that's where you can change your company name. You can add the year that it was founded, your website and a location, and you can click save if that's something that you'd like to do. You can also click edit here and edit all of the pictures that are displayed on your banner. So you can change photos in and out. You can change the layout of the photos. You can reorganize them. And once that you're happy with the way that your banner looks, you can just click save changes. Next on this page is the overview and video. And both are, are just, um, vi video is optional but um, overview is something that you can add whenever you'd like. Um, both are just an opportunity for in investors to learn more information about your company, its investment philosophy and strategy, um, and just get a better idea of who you are. You can also edit your opportunity directly from this page by just clicking on your opportunity. Um, we're going to or you can go uh, to this tab, this opportunities tab and edit directly from the opportunities tab. We're gonna dive into how to edit your opportunity a little bit more later, but you'll also notice that opportunities are higher up on your manager profile page than they used to be. They used to be all the way at the bottom underneath the track record and they've moved further up in the page. And this is just to make it easier for investors to be able to identify your new and open opportunities. Next is the details, and this is really where you can display you know, how much investor capital you've managed, your company and principal's experience, strategies, markets you work in. You can click, you can edit this by clicking edit. You can add additional markets and strategies, additional information here. Next is team. You can add additional team members by clicking edit up here. You can add a principal by clicking add principal here, it will prompt you to um, become Verivest verified through this pathway. And what that is, is Verivest will do background checks of all your principal members and display the metrics to investors for them to view. And it looks like this to an investor. So when they click on your principal, they'll be able to read a biography of your principal by clicking there. They'll be to, they, they will be able to see all the metrics that we've checked for and items that have passed will show with a blue check mark. And they'll also be able to see an employment history or education if that's something that you choose to display. You are able to bypass this. You don't have to become Verivest verified in order to add a principal member, but it is just another layer of transparency that you can make available to your investors and in order to help them be able to know you and your company a little bit better, especially if they aren't super familiar with you. You can add key other key team members that you wanna to display to investors here as well by clicking add employee. Last on this page is the track record. And you can add single assets that have gone full cycle and display all the returns metrics that are associated with this asset um, to your investors. And you can also add an image here um, of the actual asset and just gives inf investors a little bit more information about your management history, um, just for them to be able to you know, make, you know, make decisions um, if they want to see how you've done historically. You also have the option to not display this at all. You don't have to have a track record displayed, it's optional. All right, next is um, the contacts tab. This is a relatively new tab that's available on the manager dashboard. And you'll notice that it displays by contact name. It displays a status here. These statuses are showing as active because these um, investors and prospects have and a login to the investor um, portal. But the, there's also additional statuses that display here. Offline means they do not use the investor portal at all. Invited means they've been sent a welcome email but have not um, activated an investor their um, investor portal at all. Committed is how much capital that they've committed in offerings that you have. And then you'll notice offerings and opportunities here. This is where you can see what offerings and opportunities um, your contacts, if they are investors, have invested in. 
So um, some opportunities have mul multiple offerings, and that's one of the reasons why opportunities is displaying and offerings is displaying. So you'll notice this investor is invested in both the equity fund and a debt offering. And it's just, this is just to get be for you to be able at a glance to see some more high level information about these contacts. You also have the option to download all of this information by clicking on this box here and clicking export. And once it exports, it comes, in, it exports to an Excel file. Oh, of course, it's downloading. Let's see if this opens. All right. Oops. All right. So when it, it downloads, it looks like this. It gives you the contact name, their email, their phone number if they have it, and the information that also displays on that chart in on the um, platform. Once you click into a contact, it displays like this. You're able to see where they've viewed, if they've viewed your profile page, if they viewed your opportunity, if they've made an investment pledge, if they downloaded a document. You can also communicate to other team members on your team to help push investors along if they get stuck somewhere in the process. It's just another tool to help you manage investors in your investor base. You also have the ability to see if they have any investments from clicking directly on this and contact and if they have any investment accounts and what accounts they have with you. Next is the accounts tab. This is where you can see investors that have a completed investment with you and all the historical information related with that. So you can use the search bar to search directly for an account if you know the investor that you're looking for and you can just select them directly, or you can use the filters to narrow exactly what you're looking for. You can do it by account type. You can do it by um, if they have an active investment in a certain offering, um, accreditation status or identity status. I'm gonna search for an investor here. Once you've clicked on a particular investor, you're able to see their verification status and their, if they've passed AML KYC and when their accreditation expires. You can also see their account information. All of it is displayed here. And then their contact information displays here at the bottom. That's also what would pull in this contacts tab. You're able to see their investments. Um, you're able to see any transactions or distributions that they may have. You can click on distribution preferences and you can even edit the distribution preference here if an investor tells you they'd like to update it. You can click edit, you can change it, a bank account if you want, enter in all of this information, and then you would click save and it would update. Any documents that are attached with this investor are displayed here in the documents. And if they had multiple documents, it would be categorized here. You can also upload a new document to, for a single investor by clicking add new document. You also have the ability to download all of your accounts um, information by clicking on this box here and then downloading all of your list of accounts. Or if you have specific accounts that you wanna download, you can use the filter again and you can select just investments in um, a certain offering, um, however you'd like to arrange it. And then you can click the box here and then download. And then once it's downloaded, you can open it up and see the information that is displayed. It displays the account name, the account type, the email address, the tax ID number associated with that investor, their contact information. If they had a custodian, it would also pull the custodian's address here. All right, for the investments portion, this is where you can manage your Active and completed investments. Completed investments will show as completed here. If you have in progress investments, they'll show as anything other than completed. And you can click on it and see what needs to be done. So first you'll notice that it displays by username. And then once you click on this, you'll be able to see the actual investment account. You'll be able to see if they've passed AML KYC or if you need to do additional things to get them through that process. 
you can see if they've signed their documents or, or if you need to sign their documents. You also have the option to manually verify their accreditation by clicking this blue button that says manually verify. You can also confirm receipt of funds by clicking confirm and then it will um, add a contribution here. Opportunities is where you can edit your um, open opportunities. If you've had fully funded opportunities, they would show here um, as well, but um, the open ones will display as open. If you want this opportunity to be visible on your profile page, you would check this check mark. If you don't, you would uncheck this check mark. You can share your opportunity link with investors by clicking this share link up here, and you can email it or just copy the link directly and drop it into an email that way. And these are things that you're able to edit on your um, opportunity up here. You can add additional tags. You can add a little more information in the description. You can switch out images here by um, dropping images in this gallery. You can also add a video that will pull for investors to view when they're on your opportunity or add any additional um, documents down here at the bottom that you would like them to see, such as like an asset update. And then you also have the ability to preview any changes you've made by clicking preview. Once everything looks the way that you want it to look, you would just click continue editing and then click save to save any changes you've made. Offerings, once again, is kind of more geared toward our admin tools. Um, but what it looks like is when you're in here, you're able to see your total investor holdings and the investor accounts, their contributions. You can see historical statements and distribution sets, transfers. There's documents that have been shared with all the investors that are in um, this offering. So you will wanna kind of be careful doing making changes in here because it can affect admin related things. And then last is reports. And if you have a created and saved report, it will display like this in your reports section. And you have the ability to um, edit any report that is already saved by clicking this edit button. And if it has a period associated with it, you could just change the period or, and then click save. And then once you, have it the way you want it to be. You would just click this download button to download the report. And then you can add any new reports here by clicking add new reports. And then this is the list of reports that you have the option to create um, and save. And I would encourage you to go onto our support site, which I'll show you how to access in just a moment and read more about what e each report is and the information that it pulls just so that you can have a better idea of what access you have um, to information with these reports. All right, so this is where the support bot is here. So you can click on it and it will take you to this page of the support bot. So you can actually chat directly with our support team um, by clicking send us a message right here or there's some pre-suggested articles here um, for you to use. Or if you're not really sure which, what you're looking for, you can click search for help. And then it's categorized into two um, topics. There's investor-related support, support articles and manager-related support articles. So investor-related support articles are really helpful if you have an investor that has a question on how to do something, you're able to access this and give them a link that will help them be able to accomplish whatever they're needing to accomplish in their investor portal. Or you can use this manager pathway. And there's some pre-suggested pathways here built into the support library. And if you're still not sure and you're like, I don't know where I would need to find an article, you can actually just type in a keyword and it will give you articles that have that keyword and it's easy to kind of figure out where you need to go from there. All right, so that is the manager dashboard overview. I'm gonna pass it to Erin to start the investor portal side of things. Yeah, thanks, Nicole. All right, let me share my screen. Okay, so like Nicole said, I'm gonna uh, go through what the uh, investor experience is in the investor portal. 
Um, the first thing I'm going to show you here is the login page. So this is where your investors will land when you share with them a link to the investor portal. Um, as you can see here, your manager pro, uh, logo, logo is prominently uh, in the middle of the page, so they know that they're in the right spot. And once the investor enters their email address and creates a password, if they're logging in for the first time, they'll go ahead and hit login. And once they're logged in, this is the page that the investor will land on. Um, as you can see here, this particular investor already has three investments with this manager. Um, and at a glance here at the top, um, the investor can see their total capital balance, the total capital they've committed, total capital contributed. And if they have any return of capital that would display here as well as any return on capital. Um, I'm gonna go ahead, of course, most, uh, investors are interested in their investments. So I'm gonna start with view investments. And from here, the investor can see at a glance that they have one pending investment that is yet to be completed with this manager. And then down below, if they have any completed investments, those would appear here at the bottom of the page. So this investor has two completed investments with this manager through two different uh, investment accounts. Um, up here is a summary of the investments, again, at a glance, showing total capital committed and contributed, uh, as well as their capital balance. And if the investor had received any distributions, that number would appear here. If the investor um, wants to take a look at their investment and do a deeper dive, they can click view investment. And from here, the investor gets a little summary of their investment with this particular account. Um, they can see the date of inception, their percentage of ownership, um, again, as well as any distributions that might have occurred and any uh, net income. If the investor clicks here on this little arrow, Again, a little more information about this particular investment. Um, it shows the market value, the unit price, unit held, and a PREF return rate. Up here a little more towards the top, this investor has the opportunity to view any documents that may, may be associated with this particular investment. And from here, um, when they land on this page, they any and all documents that are associated with this investment would populate here. But over here on the left-hand side, the investor can also sort. So if they have a number of documents, if this you know investment has been um, going for a long time, they might have a number of documents. And if let's say they're looking for tax documents, tax season, and they're looking for a K-1 or 1099, those would appear here or if they're looking specifically for statements, they can click on statements and easily find any statements that might they might have received, um, as well as it, their investment documents. Um, from here, the investor can also click on transactions and see any and all transactions that have occurred. And they can, if they have investments and multiple opportunities with you, they'd be able to search that here or if they're looking for um, transactions associated with a particular account, they can scroll through here and find the investment account that they're looking for in that particular investment. So if I click on Warner Family Trust, I can see the total transactions with that particular account. And go back to portfolio. Um, if the, if the uh, manager wants to review the information that you've shared with the investor through the manager profile, they will land on the manager profile page, which Nicole showed us earlier. So from here, I can see that this manager has been Verabest verified, which means that all principals have passed um, our background checks. I can take a look uh, at the overview of the of the manager and all the information that you that this manager has shared with their investors regarding the firm view any videos the manager might want to share with uh, investors uh, click and see any open opportunities 
and review any details on this manager, for instance, uh, investor capital manage, um, principal experience, total real estate experience, regions, strategies, and types of investments offered. I can also uh, view any team, key team members. And if I'm interested, take a look at their uh, track record that they've shared with all their investors. If this investor is ready to go ahead and make an investment in any open opportunities, I can click here to see any open opportunities that have been shared with me. And I can do a deep dive into the details of the opportunity. And from here, I can see um, you know, a high level view of the strategy of this particular opportunity, any risk profiles, and the type of investment. There's a description here about the opportunity that the manager has shared, a video, and I can take a look at any documents associated with this opportunity. For instance, the operating agreement, PPM or subscription agreement, which I can download and view before I'm ready to make my investment. If the investor is ready to invest, they can go ahead and click here on invest. And this will begin the invest flow. So now I'm gonna just show you what it looks like um, for an investor to create an investment account as well as an investment. From here, we can see that the minimum investment amount in this particular um, opportunity is $50,000. I'm gonna go ahead and create an investment of $50,000. And then I'm gonna check this box, which essentially says that this is a non-binding pledge at this time until I have an opportunity to review and sign the subscription documents, which will be sent to me at the end of the investment process. I'm gonna go ahead and click pledge and continue. From here, I have an opportunity to either choose to make this investment from any existing accounts that I have already created or I can add a new account. So to show you what that uh, experience looks like, I'm gonna click add new account. And I can choose uh, a, any number of types of investment accounts to make this investment from. For the sake of this demonstration, I'm gonna show you what it looks like to make an individual investment. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in a first name. email address. And from here, I have to choose if I'm a resident or non-US resident, as well as my citizenship. I can either choose to be a US resident or any, you know, any other country that the investor might be a, a citizen of. The next step is to put in a physical home address. And this is important that the investor does put in a physical home address. Um, this is how one of the steps that we need the investor to complete in order to complete AML KYC checks on the investor. So go ahead and put in my home address. And then if I have a mailing address I'd like to use rather other than my home address, I can go ahead and enter that information here. Two more um, items of uh, you know, biographical information we not need on the investor to complete those AML KYC checks is their social security number and their date of birth. Finally, the investor has two questions they have to answer down here. Uh, the first one being if they're a stock exchange member or a member of FINRA and if they're a 10% shareholder in a publicly held company. I'm gonna hit submit. And uh, once I've hit submit, uh, my investment progress begins to populate here. And from here, the investor can see that they have created their investment. The investor can see that they have created their investment account. Here uh, lets me know that my account has been verified, which means that I have passed the AML KYC check necessary to complete this investment. 
From here, I get to select how I'd like to fund this investment. Um, if you allow both check and wire as a funding method, um, the investor has an opportunity to choose between those two. For the demonstration, I'm gonna choose wire. And then once I choose wire, the any funding instructions that you've shared with us to give to your investors will populate here. And I can download these instructions and save them. So when I'm ready to give this information to my bank to fund uh, this investment, I have those ready. I'm gonna go ahead and click continue. And the next step will be for me to add my distribution preferences. If this particular um, opportunity uh, allows for both the receiving and reinvestment of distributions, the investor has an opp opportunity to choose between one of those two items. I'm gonna show you what it looks like to receive distributions. Next, I have the opportunity to either have a check mailed to my home address or a bank transfer. I'm gonna go ahead and select bank transfer. And then I have to add in the bank account information of where I would like those funds deposited. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that I'd like the funds deposited into my checking account. I will have to nickname the account something. So I'm gonna call it Warner Checking. I need to add in the bank name, the routing number of this account. And my account number. And then I'm going to go ahead and click continue. Oops, I didn't get a five digit number in there. Sorry. There we go. And hit continue. The last step in this process is for the investor to verify their accredited investor status if this fund or offering is a 5060 fund. So I'm gonna go ahead and click, select verify accreditation. And the first step in this process is for the investor to self-certify as to whether or not they are an accredited investor. So I'm gonna select yes, I'm an accredited investor. And then the next step here is for the investor to choose the pathway through which they are going to prove their accredited investor status. So as you can see here, the you know, investor has a number of ways that they can prove this, but I'm going to select that I'm going to supply a third party accredited investor letter. So I'm going to click verification letter. And from here, I have an opportunity, if I have one already, to upload a third party letter that is signed by either a CPA, attorney, or registered investment advisor that must be dated within the last 90 days. If I have one of those available, I can go ahead and click here and drop that file here. Or if I don't have one, I can select uh, here, click here, and I can download a sample accredited investor letter that I can email to either my CPA attorney or registered investment advisor, asking them to fill it out and sign this on my behalf so that I can then come back here and upload that letter. If the investor is not, doesn't have the letter readily, readily available, but they'd like to go ahead and move forward with getting the uh, subscription documents, that's totally fine. We don't um, require that the investor have all the necessary documentation during this process. Um, we will, if they just go ahead and hit continue. A member of our team will reach out to the investor and follow up to make sure that we get all the necessary documentation to verify their accredited investor status. All right, so from here, I can see that I have successfully added a verified investment account. I have selected how I'm gonna fund this investment as well as added my distribution preferences. Down here, because I did not um, complete the accredited investor status yet, um, this little timestamp here lets me know that this item is still pending. But don't worry, like I mentioned, our team will reach out and follow up to make sure that this can completed before the investment is completed. 
The last step for the investor that, to do here would then be to sign the subscription document. And if the investor's ready, they can hit sign documents and a link will be sent to them from DocuSign with the subscription documents that they can go ahead and sign. Um, from here, once uh, you know that DocuSign link has been sent to the investors, um, we can see now that the investor, what we're waiting for, the next step in this process would be for the investor to sign those subscription documents. If the investor has signed, this would be a purple check mark. And then the next step would be for the manager to sign and fully execute the documents. And then once that's been completed, there'd be a check mark here. And then the last step in the investment process, of course, is for the investor to fund the investment. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save and exit. And now I can see that I have added an additional investment that is now in my pending um, investment uh, status. One other item I wanted to show you here is in addition to the chat bot that Nicole showed us earlier with the manager dashboard tools, um, uh, something that's new here is that investors have the opportunity to um, look up any articles if they need help from our support library. So from here, you know, the investor can select, yes, I'm an investor, I'm looking for some information. And they have the opportunity to scroll through here and look to see if there is any um, articles that they're you know, looking for. Lots of articles in here, um, you know, reviewing your investment account transactions and statements. There's information in here about what this information means as far as transactions go. Really super helpful information. Or if that's not what I'm looking for and I'm curious how to um, find and view my statements, I can go ahead and click statements. And I can scroll through here and say, oh, yep, here we go. I'm looking on how to view and download my you know, investment documents or statements. And then there's an article with step-by-step -step instructions on how to complete that. And that concludes the investor portal experience. So I'll let you take it away, Kaylee, and let us know if you have any questions from anybody that we can help answer. All right. We did have a couple of questions come in. Um, the first one is they want to confirm that they will not be charged for adding transactions. Um, I can help with this one. I'm not entirely sure what you mean by adding tra transactions. If it's like adding new distributions for investors, that's part of your um, admin service. And so that that's included in the fees that you pay for admin service. If it's at, like adding a contribution and completing out an investment, um, if that's what you're meaning, there is a small fee for completing an investment and that's to kind of pay for the AML KYC checks and the identity checks and um, the DocuSign envelope that gets to sent to investors. So hopefully that's what you're asking for. Um, I'm not entirely sure what you meant by transactions though. Um, the next question is, as a sponsor, can we create new opportunities on our portal as one, as a one-off investment opportunity? Yes, you can um, do single asset in, um, syndications on, on your portal. I would encourage you to reach out to your customer success manager, either me or Aaron, to help facilitate that process and make sure that you get the admin service associated that you need um, for, for that new offering and just help facilitate the onboarding process as well. Um, but yes, you can do uh, a single asset as um, on the offerings, on the opportunities. Um, and then just, it seems like there's two more. Um, the next one is, can the manager access the sample accreditation letter so we can email it to new investors? That's a great question. Um, the the manager currently doesn't have access to that sample accreditation letter, but you can always email our support team at support at and they can send you one, or you can reach out to either Nicole or myself, and we'd be happy to get that letter to you. Wonderful. Um, and then let me just make sure. 
Okay, we still have some coming in. Um, another one is if you are automatically reaching out to investors to follow up on the verification letter, will that create an automatic bill of $125 to us? Or if investors click on the speak with us at the bottom? Um, we do bill for accreditation verifications, and that bill will come once that accreditation verification has been completed on your monthly invoice. Perfect. That the question that I answer that fully, Kaylee. I believe so. Part, okay. I would, yes, I would say once the accreditation gets verified, that's when the billing portion happens, but the communication between whoever is communicating with the investor, um, that's all kind of within the process of um, verifying. Um, and then the last one that we have here, um, it says, I was not sure who my customer success manager was until now. It's nice to have these presentations. I hope to see more of these and more communications. Yes, that's the goal. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. Um, and then it looks like we did have um, a question come in just a little bit earlier before um, the webinar. So I'll just go ahead and read that now. Um, if we have okayed an investor to invest under the minimum um, amount for the fund, are, is the investor able to create the investment on their own? Uh, that's a great question and, and one that comes up from time to time. Um, if you have an investor that wants to make a below minimum investment and you are okay with that investor doing so, the investor is not able to make that investment on their own through the portal. But what you can do is you can reach out to our support team at support at veravest.com and give us the investor's name, the opportunity that they're interested in investing in, and the amount that you've okayed for them to invest. Um, as well as the name of the account through which they'd like to invest. And then our support team will reach out, um, assist them if they need to with completing or setting up a new investment account, and then send them that link to the subscription documents via DocuSign with that below minimum investment. Wonderful. Um, and then we did have one more come in and I think that will um, be at our max time. Um, so the last question is, can we turn the verification through Veravest option? I have a much cheaper option for letters for the $125 that was regarding any investor help, not the letter itself. Yeah, I'll, I'll take this one again. <laughs> um, you can uh, not have our team complete an accreditation verification for your managers. Um, what we will need you to do is Nicole had shown or previously um, in her manager dashboard tools, how to manually verify that investment. Um, and if you don't recall that, um, there is a link to how to complete a manually ver manual verification in our support library. Or again, just email support at veravest.com and we can send you that link or help answer any questions associated with manual verification of accreditation verification. Wonderful. Um, all right, everyone, that's our time. We really appreciate everyone attending and we will, there will be a recording of this webinar for anyone that wasn't able to make it and we will make that available for people to view. Um, thank you all and have a good rest of your day.